聪者。On the estate tomorrow night when Karen finds out if Sharon's half-sister is also Barry's long-lost brother and Harry comes face to face with the devastating loss of his hairline. That's the estate tomorrow at 8.30. But before we go live to Eamon and the gang, there's just time to look forward to what's coming up later tonight on Channel One. At 9.30, we have an in-depth documentary about the downfall of Jacob Hamilton Mann, which forced this year's early election. That's The Night Visitor at 9.30 poorly narrated by Patrick Bannon. At 10.30, Adrian Atkinson Blimey is here for a special episode of Incisors, where he sinks his teeth into the current cost of living crisis by interviewing a multimillionaire, a nurse and a bin man to see who is suffering the worst. Here's a clue, it's not the millionaire. At 11.30, fasten your seatbelts as it's time for Wayne to Spirit Whistle to lead another terrifying exploration in Hello? and Spooky. Hello? Eric? And tonight, Eric? They'll be asking the this fucking thing is useless. I mean, what is the point in giving me a, a handset that doesn't even work? Jeez, I tell you what this is, it's a bad sign. I mean, I'm not one for almonds, but this, this is a bad omen. I mean, Jesus, the fucking... But now, here on Channel One, it's time for something far more... Wasn't on. <laughs> Lucky, could have been carnage. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Eric, technical problem. Yeah, yeah, standing by. Yeah, yeah, standing by. Good evening, I'm Eamon Tightly. Behind me is a true TV legend. Now running for Prime Minister, everyone's handiest man, Peter Clement. Now, Peter thinks he's been brought here tonight to film a special reunion episode of Just the Job. But as always, viewers, you know better. Ten seconds, places. It's time. Let's start the show. In five, four, three, four, three. Cracking stuff. Cracking stuff. Good evening, friends. And yes, it's Good true. Evening, and I can hardly yes, really believe it myself. We are back for this special <laughs> one off reunion episode of Just the Job. And to be clear, it is the show that you remember with the good old sidekick, little Jimmy Chisel, some top tips on how to improve your DIY, and of course, some special surprise guests from Just The Job's illustrious past. And I don't know what you're thinking, there's an election coming on, but there'll be no politics tonight, not on this show. And that is a Peter Clement promise. So let's kick things off tonight with a little askance look at the mighty bevel, because you would Hold be surprised. Hold it right there, please. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it certainly is me. <laughs> you naughty, naughty <laughs> fuckers! Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Peter. Frank, did you know about, look at that face, you fucking did, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> fuckers, a lot of you. Yeah. Peter, you thought you were here tonight to record Peter, a special reunion episode of Just the Job. I, I, I just, I can't believe it. But tonight, Peter Clement, <laughs> these are the Peter bits Clement. of your life. <laughs> Come on, 
Mark, this way, Peter. Mind your step there now. How do you know? I'm not believing it, Honestly, I'm a huge fan of your show. I'm like Listen up, Eric, mate. I don't care what you have to say. You're just a character, and I'm definitely something more than that, I think. And that's what I'm saying right now is also a script. Can't be. I mean, I can feel myself saying it. Shit. Should I call someone for you, Dave? Better not. They'll need another actor if you do. Who will? Doesn't matter. Oops, there's Amy. Gotta go. Have a good show. No. Didn't like that. Won't be trying that again. So, Eamon, how long... Planning this, Eamon. Eamon, how long have you been planning? Eamon? Eamon? Peter Gordon Clement, you were born October 10th, 1923, in the northern town of Rothering, to Fanny and Martin Clement. And I, at that time, was barely a twinkle in the milkman's eye. No, that, that's not right. That's Dorothy Hammerman. No, 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 no. Stop the music. Stop the music. That was me working out what had gone wrong with the script already. Eric. I'll just come on, though, shall I? Eric. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Hammerman! <laughs> Having a few scheduling issues. Yeah, uh, it would appear so, Mrs. Hammerman. Soldier on no, eh? So, Mrs. Hammerman. Soldier on no, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shall we? Oh, Here's one, one finger for the north, north two fingers, fingers to the south, and, and we can, can all apologise tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, he's having a drink. Uh, lovely to have you with us, Mrs. Hammerman. Lovely so tell us, what was life like for Peter growing up in the Clement House? I have no idea. I have no idea. Excellent. Excellent. Ask me something else. I have to stick to the script. <laughs> Says who? I mean, Eric. <laughs> you can just ignore him, darling. He won't mind. If I don't stick to the script, it'll be carnage. <laughs> oh, all the most memorable scripts are, oh, darling. Can I give you a bit of advice that I told Petey a few years ago now? Oh, I, I'm sure we'd all love to hear some Dorothy Hammerman wisdom. Mm, there you go, sweetie. Oh, no, no, I have a very low tolerance. Trust me, help. Oh, lovely. What was in that, then? Uh, Peter, let's put your palate to the test. Let's put your palate to the test. <laughs> Oh, oh, bottoms up. Fortified wine. Uh, <laughs> you were going to give us some of your wisdom. Uh, I just did, darling. <laughs> Dorothy Hammerman, everyone. <laughs> oh, I don't think he even opened his mouth. Nobody's ever had that problem with you, Dorothy. You horrible man. <laughs> Enjoy the show. Mwah. 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 I'll see you for the finale. You will. <laughs> In 1938, you were a 15-year-old at Rothering Elementary, but already you had quite the reputation as a ladies' man. Who's this? Chew me up! Well, it's little Jimmy Chisel, obviously. It's your childhood sweetheart, Chelsea Bond. <laughs> it most certainly is not. OK, well, is that a cup of tea? Yeah, it's a little Jimmy Chisel. <laughs> Been a while. It has that. It has that. Is that for me? Thought you might need a copy after that last guest. I can only drink a cheeky little blighter. Oh, uh, whatever you say, Although boss. I do like coffee. <laughs> Jimmy, let me ask you this. What do you think we could see in Peter way back then? You could have predicted his path to household name. Wait a minute, you cheeky little bastard. Oh, did I not say? It's got a little kick to it. You know what I mean, Eamon? Uh, I don't, really. Oh, relax, mate. There's no need to pretend to have a drink with me. No need to pretend to have a drink with me. Don't know what you mean. Actually, that's quite nice. Don't know what you mean. Bit nostalgic. <laughs> brings tears to me eyes. You see... Pete was always pulling booze-related pranks on the set of Just a Job. He's lucky nobody lost a finger. Or a foot. What's that now? <laughs> Little Jimmy Chisel, everybody! <laughs> Thanks for the coffee. Oh, you won't be saying that when the acid kicks in. What's that mean? Only joking! 
Now, before we bring our next guest on, let's take a look at a classic clip from Just the Job. Peter, it's on that monitor there if you'd like to take a look. So, we're trying this new segment called I'll Drink Tea. And that's about two minutes. And right, I will go and take a look at that man. I can't see a thing without my glasses. Uh, it was an idea that Peter and Jimmy came up with at the pub one night, I think. Anyway, it was not going very well. <laughs> the first week got a bit feisty. Yep, that's it. I think we can safely say we've got him drunk. Skinny, the pop star on. Interesting choice. I'll drink, drink to that. Uh. Uh, Another drink to go on the list. Yeah, why not? Got to keep the old grey matter lubricated after all. Can we reset, please? Pete and Jimmy, they had other ideas. Well, it's time for a segment that the papers have called explosive and the prudes have called inadvisable, reckless and puerile. It's... I'll drink to that! Now, I want to say up front that our floor manager, Frank, advised us against doing this, didn't you, Frank? Yes. I definitely did advise against doing this. It's a bad idea. Get, Get off the, the screen, screen, Frank! Get on with it, then. Tonight's guest fancies himself as a bit of a handyman. It's everyone's favourite TV personality, it says here on the card, Peter Glamour! Good day. it's a pleasure to be here. Now, I've never met you before, have I, PC? You don't mind if I call you PC, do you? You can call me whatever you like, pal. Not according to my contract. Well, if you've read a paper at any point this week, you know how this bit goes. So, shall we make a start? Total stranger who I've never met before? Yeah, don't leave it the point, LJ. Cats are better than dogs. I'll drink to that. Hey! Funny, always had you down as a dog person. What can I say, Mrs. C likes a stroke of an evening. <laughs> I'm sure she does. Coffee is better than tea. Especially first thing in the morning. Hey! You're supposed to say, I'll drink to that. Oh, shit, sorry. I'll drink to that. Hey! Yeah, I'll see what you did there. I always said you had excellent eyesight. Uh, I'll drink to that. Oi, hey! that wasn't in rehearsals. <sighs> Skinny is better than Binny Bob Jean shorts. Never heard of either of them. So I guess I'll drink to that. Last week doing this. Oh, is that who she was? Yeah. I thought she was in porn the way she kept banging on about a Girls are better than boys. And Mrs. C is the best of the lot, and I will definitely drink to that. <laughs> oh, now this one's gonna be hard for you because we both know how much you want that shot. I do. I do want that shot. Little Jimmy Chisel, popular and handsome daytime TV entertainer and master craftsman. It doesn't say that. <laughs> It does, on his look. It says, little Jimmy Chisel and all that good stuff about me is better than fading amateur woodworker Peter Clement. Fading amateur woodworker? <laughs> Two guests down. Haven't asked the see question that yet. God Still, you face. remember legendary episodes You're of Just the Job when he was clearly out of control. No, 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 Eric. This is a family oh, show. We're not having any of that. Well, if you want them to be playing us in shows like Best of the 80s long after we're dead, sometimes it's just best to let it run. No. The show is called of Bits of Your Life. Ten seconds, everybody. Not getting tight with Eamon Pistley. That would make a good show. Okay, going in five, four, three. Oh, do that segment again. Fantastic memories there from one of the Fantastic nation's most beloved TV shows. Now, beloved. Just the Job had two successful runs, of course, from 58 to 64, and again from 1972 to 1976. And through many of those shows, there was always one man by your side. <clears throat> but he's already been on. So, he's already been on. who's there? So, and do you have any alcohol on you? Uh, Julia Salisbury, and uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay, good. Julia Assembly, everybody. You okay? Don't worry, I can handle it better. We don't want another repeat of Huntledon, do we? <laughs> well, uh, you're certainly in a position to give us a unique you're insight on this bit of Peter's life. What are the differences, would you say, between the <laughs> on-screen... <laughs> oh, sorry, I mean, that'll, that'll be Dottie's sorry, fucking 45 wine, sorry. <laughs> uh, what are the differences, would you say... Jesus! Oh, shunt, but my... Gracious. Let me get a glass of water, Eric. Right now. Yeah, don't worry. Ah, right oh, it doesn't matter. 
We're back. Let's tally another drink. Drink just the old glass of white wine. <laughs> Good for you, uh, Julia Gooseberry, everybody. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you a question. What's the point? Don't back up. So, uh, now we're going to have a look at some archive footage. Oh, shite, I've sent her off too early. Uh, Eric! I've sent her off too early. Uh, so, Eric! So, we're going to show you some archive footage, which hopefully shows something relevant. Shows something relevant. There it is. The perfect dovetail joint. Who would be proud to see that on the cabinet, eh? But now it's time to check in with little Jimmy Chisel and see how he's getting on. Jimmy? I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, Jesus, Jimmy. Shit, sorry, Frank. You all right there, LJ? Christ, what was in that coffee? Ooh, looks like little Jimmy Chisel's been at the bottle, ladies and gents. So now it's time for another episode of our occasional series, Things Not To Do When You're Drunk. Ba, 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 ba. Things not to do when you're drunk. What do you need, boss? Jimmy. Jimmy, 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 tell us, my handy friend, on the Just The Job scale, how slosh do you think you are? Well, boss, I'd say I'm somewhere between a few pints at lunchtime and don't operate a domestic animal. It's quite a wide band. Care to narrow it down? Well, if I have to, I'd say I'm near. Ask a drinking buddy if you seem safe to drive. Excellent. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It tasted like coffee. Ethyl alcohol, LJ, the best friend of the practical joker. It was Frank's idea. He got some for cleaning up the mess from his sores, didn't you, Frank? Hey, that was private. Sorry, mate. Right, Jimmy. Today's things not to do when you're drunk involve these. Wood carving is a tradition that dates back thousands of years. It's in our blood. Well, not LJ's blood, he's about 85% booze at the moment, but for the rest of us, wood carving can be as simple as making a mortise and tenon joint or as complex as something like this. So, Jimmy, that's the challenge. You have until the end of the show to turn this into this. You're taking the piss. Language, mate. Off you go. Now, the earliest wood carvings were such things as wooden spears from the Middle Paleolithic era. Ow, shit! Or the fish hooks and pipe stems of ancient nomadic tribes. Wood carving, wood carving has always been both utilitarian and decorative. Ow! <laughs> you okay there, LJ? Now that looks like something you shouldn't do when you're drunk. LJ? Certainly is, boss. If I wasn't hammered, I reckon this would probably hurt. <laughs> A lot. Could yes, hurt. it sure does look nasty. Play the jingle. <laughs> So great to see you've lost none of the old spark. Uh, rejoining us is Julia Grimble Bimble. Not even close. <laughs> uh, nice to see you getting into the spirit of the evening. <laughs> if you'll pardon the pun. Well, mine's not really a spirit, so the pun doesn't really work. See, this is what happens when you tear up the script. No, uh, there was a little table over there where we're supposed to gather for the finale. Oh, I got you one of these. Oh, don't mind if I do. What about Hunter then? Is that show business for you? In fact, Lovely, Danny Hatch. Did you ever even watch any of those early episodes of Just the Job? No, I'm sorry, I was a bit too young. <laughs> so it was absolutely pointless bringing you back here. Seems so. Great. June thing of me, everybody. What a strange show. That's very popular with the use their numbers. I'm thinking to that. Yeah, me too. Yep, bottoms up. In 1941, long before Just the Job ever aired, you, like so many men of your generation, were conscripted into the army to go to the continent to fight. And it was there, on those very battlefields, that the strangest of friendships was born. Right, well, it says on this card here, ten words about Peter Clement. So, um, handsome, obviously, kind eyes, so that's three, um, Honourable, yeah. cheeky oh, like a monkey. So what's that then? Is that ten? I think that's ten. Yeah. Who's that? 
Yeah. I've had a few. I haven't got a clue. Right, whoever you are, come on in! <laughs> You can handle me, you old devil. Hey, steady on, you'll get me into trouble with a missing. Let's all take a seat then. All right, you're all women. All women, that's a nice name, isn't it? Um, so what's it like being friends with Peter Clement? Oh, I haven't got a clue, love. I mean, we were a lot more than just bloody friends, weren't we, Yeah, that we were, darling. <laughs> I've got that many memories of you and me under the stage. Yeah, we certainly made the scenery rock, I'll give you that. <laughs> That's steady on the family show. Oh, well, then you shouldn't have got me on, should you? Yeah, she and her sister are always getting into trouble. How is Jan? How is Jan? What was that? Can I go home now, please? Uh, sure, yeah, just a moment. What's her name? Ah, I've got this. Sure, yeah, Ladies and gentlemen, Victoria Savage. <laughs> oh. Chelsea. Chelsea, you boy. Oh, <laughs> shit. Well, come back. Chelsea, I'm, I'm, I've had a few and it's been 30 years, love. It's been 30 years, love. <laughs> Well, it yeah, it is a drink. Job that brought you to the nation's heart. Starting in 1977. Actually, actually I, I feel really bad about that, actually. Actually, I'll be fine. Starting in 1977. No, I'll be back in a sec. But where are you? I'll be back in a sec. Right, okay. Right, uh, okay. Let's have a look at some Petey. Let's have a look at some Petey. And that's about two minutes. He's gone, Eric. What's that? Two thirds of the way through the show, we've lost the main guest. Oh, he'll be back. He's an old pro. He's an old drunk. Oh, Till's come back. Love, stop crying. You see, he's out there somewhere. Yeah. He's blotto. Nah, he's tipsy at best. Peter. And became a rising star in church circles instead. Has anyone seen Peter? Peter's always been a fan of his and the socialites. Right. Did always regret it, not me. It was supposed to just be an interview. But an hour before the show, Peter and Dorothy came giggling in like school children. And I got sent off to buy a large bottle of vodka. A strong one as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the youngest Archbishop in the history of the church, the Archbishop of Pendleshire, Richard Cockley. Now then. Archbishop, a few years ago, when you were a pop star... Nah, my misspent you. <laughs> oh, nonsense. We all love the socialites, don't we, everybody? Yeah. Really? You're too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> anyway, back then, you agreed to go on just the job to do a little thing called I'll Drink to That. Do you remember that? <laughs> yes, I saw the first two, and I remember feeling very strongly this was something that might come back to haunt me. Well, you're not wrong about that. Play the jingle! Uh, the 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 it's a very simple game. I'm going to read out a series of statements to you. If you agree with them, you shout out, I'll drink to that, and you down one of these glasses of holy vodka that we've laid out for you. You know, I've not seen an array like this since the socialites played in San Palmarino. <laughs> <laughs> now, for legal reasons, can you confirm that you're doing this of your own free will and that we're not blackmailing you or coercing you in any way? Not coercing, no, more like ambushing, but I've never been one to turn down a challenge, and after all, a good lord even enjoy the tipple from time to time. The judge isn't all jumble sales and child abuse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Cats are better than dogs. That clearly have not met my poodle Beelzebub. Oh. Nope. <laughs> all right. Coffee is better than tea. That, that's clearly heresy. <laughs> we will get you. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean... Ch you know what that is, do you? I'd be rather fond of country music these days. But gosh, that's broken a few hearts amongst our old fans, I'd imagine. <laughs> Billy Bob Jean Short's hit song, Do What I Say or Go Back to the Basement, is better than Graham Bannon's classic hit from the 50s, If You Won't Be My Lady, Lady. Better than Graham Bannon. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> I can't believe you actually took it. <laughs> End of the game. Why fronts are better than boxer shorts? I'll drink to that. Fantastic. We're well, learning a lot here. Mm. <laughs> a bacon sandwich is better than fish and chips. Oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, sauce on the sandwich. If you like. I'll drink to that. Girls are better than boys. Mm. Bloody drink to that. Language, <laughs> Archbishop. Charity is better than thrift. Nah, that's a bit theosophic. 
this. <laughs> that's, that's a bit deep. <laughs> the, the, the shot goes straight to my head, you know. Yeah, I can see that. He honestly thought that you were going to be sober at this point. Well, you can take the boy out of the social life, but you can't take the archbishop out of the boy. <laughs> no, wait, um... No, wait, that doesn't sound... God is better than all of us. Of course he is. He's fucking great! Well, I'll drink to that! I'll drink to that! <laughs> oh. You have a bucket somewhere. <laughs> You'd think getting smashed on live television would have ruined the archbishop's career. But it actually did the opposite. He's more popular than ever now. Where is he? Eamon, he's on his way. Oh, Christ's sake, Eric. He's just unpredictable. Ten seconds, everybody. He's bloody ossified is what he is. Okay, we are going in five, four, three. Unforgettable stuff. But while you took all the credit, arguably someone else did all the work, didn't they now? But that was uh, Dorothy Hammerman. And was, she's uh, been on already. <laughs> well, if you don't <laughs> get the pants off, you'll never know whether it were balls or flaps, as they say at the disco. Flaps, as they say at the disco. What does that even mean? It means play the ruddy music! Oh, right, yeah. Uh, you heard the man. Play the ruddy music. Doesn't matter, he's not even here. Way, pet. Uh, yes, towards the uh, towards the empty yeah. chairs. Come on, Martin, this way. Oh, bloody on, fussing on, woman. <laughs> so you're Peter's parents, I assume. Who's yeah, this twinkly wanker? Sorry about him. He's had one too many cans backstage, haven't you, Martin? Oh, shut up. I'm Fanny Clement, and this is my husband, Martin. And yes, we are Petey's parents. Lovely. What did you call my wife? What's that now? She doesn't want to speak to you, you glittery prick. Martin Abernathy Clement, you apologise right now. Oh, I don't know for you two. Right now. Are we going to have a scene, Martin? Going to have a scene, Martin. No. Good. We're not. We're not. Now, Mr. Tightly, where's my son? Now, Mr. Tightly. That's. That is a very good question, that. that. Who are you that. calling a twat? We seem to have temporarily uh, mislaid him. <laughs> well, you know what they say at the High Court, Mr. Tightly. I have no idea, Mrs. Clement, but I have a horrible feeling you're going to tell us. You can't drown kittens without a sack. <laughs> Fucking kittens! Charming. You really say that in the High Court? Well, if he's not here, we may as well go and get ready for the finale. Well I mean, it doesn't sound very legal vernacular, you know what I mean? Come on, Martin, we go in. Martin, we cut love. We're done. We're done. Sorry, Ed. He sleeps, swears. It's very common round our way. Frotogs. I should probably leave him there. It's dangerous to wake him while he's cursing. Honestly, at this point, I can make a blind bit of difference. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Clement. Right, bandit. Anyone there? Anyone there? Hello? Eamon Tightly. You like man in nuclear explosion holding on to tiny penis for safety. You've been talking to my therapist? <laughs> I bring me on, broken man. Yeah, sure, why not? Who are you? Oh, you know, actually, it doesn't matter. Just take a minute. Ah! It's Google! I need him backstage. I think maybe he lost. I was lost, but now I am. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, do you want to go over to the sofas, or shall we do the last bit here? Go to the sofas. I see, that's Eric. He wants us to do the interview over the sofas, where your old man has passed out and intermittently swearing. Yeah, he does that. I'm glorious, Eric, is the hand we say. Men who swear in sleep likely have penis of wolf. You have a lot of dicks in your turn of phrase, don't you, pal? 
not the first person to say this. Yeah, shall we, uh, let's go over to the sofa, yeah. shall we? Let's go to the sofa. Let's go, go to, to the, the sofa. sofa. Na, na, na. Na, na, na. na, na, na. Come on, Emmy, you suck up, Franny. Let's go to the sofa. <laughs> Me, it's my dad. The venerable Martin Clement, from whose noble bones you apologetically dribbled. Fucking massive bollocks. Can you hear us? Well, medical science is not entirely... Ooh. Medical science is not entirely... Do you have anything you want to say about Peter? I, I want to say... This is wrong. Can you say this? You can see what? This. Is there an masturbation technique? Ah, family show. Cunt munchers. Oh, for heaven's sake. He's a... He's been a Right, that's it. You. Right, that's it. Go over there. You. Wait for the song. Ooh, you're in trouble. Oh, I'm told off by walking decoration. <laughs> I'll see you later, pal. I go find Chelsea Bunnies. Some of us bothered to learn her name. Oh. <laughs> Tonight, if she play her cards right, she attempt... Erkistani battle sack. Very difficult sexual position. Very risky. If done right, unforgettable pleasure beyond words. If done wrong, then stop. A broken back man only good for scaring children. Chelsea Buns, where is my Chelsea Bottoms? Mum fiddlers. Oh, you're still here. Don't face. Lovely. Let's see if we can get to the end. Um, Lovely. viewers, Lovely. we've got a bit of a uh, treat coming up viewers, for you. Naked twat snatchers! No, no, it's not that. It's just a song, really, but, um, let's have a look at the current Peter Clement. Shame him, we're all made of the same stuff, you see. Yeah, not now. Cosmic dust, me, you, that camera, all of it. It's just consciousness and... And knowledge and experience, all of it. And all one enormous thought. Enormous thought. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So last week. Yeah, that's great. So last week. This is important. Are you listening? Are you listening? Not really, if I'm honest. Whose thought really is it? Hey. Whose thought is it? <laughs> Whose thought? Let's go to the debate footage. Can I, can I get a drink of something up here? I'm bloody parched. <laughs> oh, cut and thrust, getting a bit much for you. Would you like a chair? I'm younger than you, Mr Hamilton, man. <laughs> and yet, at first glance, one would be hard-pressed to spot that. You know, I've been, uh, you know, up and down the country on the campaign trail, and, and a lot of young people have come up to me, and uh, they're not all criminals, which, uh, well, surprised me. <laughs> Are you sure you wouldn't like something stronger? Huh? I beg your pardon. I believe the ale in Hunterdon is bracing at this time of year. Yeah, I like a drink, and I've never tried to hide it. <laughs> Hard to hide something that's been splashed across our screens these past 30 years. The evidence of your unsuitability for office writ large for all to behold. Whereas yours were hidden all these years, weren't it? My <clears throat> peccadilloes have now, to the great embarrassment of my family, been much publicised by the tabloid newspapers. To the great embarrassment of your family. Your family. Mate, you were going into graveyards at night, whacking off onto the graves of dead feminists. Peccadilloes? You were lucky they didn't burn you in National Park. <laughs> I think the electorate of this country are sophisticated, Mr Clement. I'm undergoing treatment for my uh, eccentricities, and I think my record shows that I am, nonetheless, a safe pair of hands. I've been, uh, you know, shaking hands up and down the country, and what I have You found are most... delusional, pal. <laughs> You're a corpse that doesn't know that it's dead yet, and you... With your platitudes and your endless double talk and your perfectly quaffured sound bites, you're almost worse than him. Because at least we can see what gets him off. But you, you're just shitting in our mouths and asking us to thank you. Uh, Mr. Clement, please. Thank you. Mr. Clement, please. They started it. They started it. Yeah. I drink. But then so do all of you 
who are voting out there, and I know that you believe that I don't lie, unlike Mr McNair here, and I don't hold dark secrets like Mr Hamilton Mann. <laughs> I just think we've all heard enough about graveyards, and the electorate want us focused on getting the job done with the economy and immigration. Do you? Do you really think that? Or is that just something you desperately want to believe? Well, gentlemen, I would imagine we'll all find out on election night. Yes. Yeah. We, we will. will. Yeah. Well, somehow we made it to the end of the show, and I think we still have our jobs. Now, we're going to sing you out now, but tonight, Peter Gordon Clement. These are the bits of your life. It's me. Yes, it is. Broken into pieces. Good fuck. All the bits of my life were real. That was your cue. I could move on. To the undiscovered country. Jesus Christ, he's quoting Shakespeare now. Right, give us that music cue again. Everyone ready? Is it hot here? Now I'll do his bit. Mint drink, sir. Cheeky, man. Ah, peace to all, man. You OK? <laughs> Never matter, mate. Okay. Brilliant. Right, here we go now. Where you been? Pray from all the trouble and strife. He's got jobs. To brighten up your life, he's got just a job. Cause it's shut down. If you need a friendly face, or if you're feeling glum, he'll pop round with a shipboard. And you'll both have lots of fun. Toss my hand, yeah. mate. If you don't like it, you can shove it. Darling, we need a jokester. I said, stop looking at me. Oh, oh, oh careful with that now. We're going to need that back. Oh, careful with that now. We're going to need that back. Do you ever feel like you're running in circles? Petey, Petey, he's such a sweetie. Oh my fucking god, we've done it. We've only fucking done it, mate. We've done it. We've finished the fucking game. We, we look at that score sheet. Look how beautiful it is. It makes me want to cry, to be honest. I'm feeling myself welling up here, mate. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's, you're the best, best gamer I have. It's been a pleasure. It's been a joy. I'll probably go and have a lie down now. Maybe a beer. You can trust. Everybody's living in